Hello everyone, my name is Richard Jang and I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco's Wireless Enterprise Networking Business Unit. I'd like to welcome you to episode 4 of a 4 part series on the Cisco Aeronet Active Sensor. In today's episode, I'll be going over how we can now assess the health of our wireless network after having deployed tests to our sensors in the previous episode. First, I'll be starting off with a demo regarding how we can monitor our wireless network's health through Cisco DNA Assurance's wireless sensor dashboard as well as Sensor360 page. Then, I'll finish it off by walking you through how we can troubleshoot any issues on the sensor if they occur. To get started, let's jump into a demo regarding how we can monitor our wireless network health on Cisco DNA Assurance. When we log into Cisco DNA Center, we'll end up at this homepage. If we want to begin monitoring the wireless test results of our Aeronet Active Sensors, we need to navigate to the Wireless Sensor Dashboard. To do so, we can open the menu, click on Assurance, then Wireless Sensors. Here, we've entered the Wireless Sensor Dashboard. The purpose of this page is to provide you with an aggregated view of the test results for all your sensors that are managed by Cisco DNA Center. With this page, you're able to easily identify the health of your wireless network based on the results of the various tests we configured in the previous episode. Starting off at the top, we have our sensor test result timeline, which has the purpose of providing you with sensor test results with these rectangles that each represent a 30 minute period of time. If I hover my cursor over one of these events, it'll show me the failure percentage for each sensor test that's being ran within my network at that particular moment in time. With such a view, I can easily gauge when my network is having issues around the clock. And as you can see, my entire timeline is completely red, indicating an abnormal and very serious network outage, which we'll explore how to look into later in this episode. By default, this sensor test result timeline, along with all trend-related charts on the wireless sensor dashboard, will display data for the past 24 hours. However, we have the ability to modify this to either 3 hours or 7 days based on your network monitoring goals. And to do so, we can go ahead and click on the date and time at the top and click on either 3 hours or 7 days to change this. As you can see, the moment I click on either one of these, all the trend view related charts and dashlets on my page will change to show the shorter or longer period of time accordingly. In addition, say an issue was reported a while back, but you never had time to look at it until now. Cisco DNA Assurance also saves all sensor test result data for the past 14 days. First option to navigate back in time is through the same date and time menu, where you can do so by entering a date and time within the start and end date input field. The second option is to use this left and right arrow on the right of the timeline, which will bring you back or forward 24 hours every time you click it. In my case, I'm interested in finding the last time in which my network was operating with less failures. So let me go ahead and click on the left arrow to go back in time a couple of days. As you can see, the timeline now shows much more green events 4 days back and shows exactly when my network started to observe serious anomalies. Notice, I was able to easily view data in the past to conclude this with just a simple touch of a button. While we're on this topic of filters, to the right, if we click on the multiple sites button, it will open up a site hierarchy menu that will allow you to choose exactly what test results from what sites we would like to view on this page. By default, all sites with claimed sensors will be selected. And if you'd like to modify the data displayed on this page, simply uncheck the sites you don't want to view. Furthest to the right, if we click on the filter button, it will open up a menu that will allow us to filter the page based on the SSIDs or specific bands that my sensors are testing. Let's go ahead and continue leaving these settings as default, but just keep in mind that with all these filter settings, the wireless sensor dashboard really allows us to drill down to specific metrics and locations we want to monitor. Now, Back to the sensor-related data. Next on the page, we have our overall summary section, which will provide you with a slightly more detailed trend view regarding the test results over the past 24 hours. As you can see next to total tests, we ran over 50,000 tests over the past 24 hours. And below, we have a percentage and color-coded breakdown of each category. How we can interpret the colors is that dark red by default means 30% or more of my tests are failing, light red means 15-30%, to Light green means 1 to 15%, dark green means less than 1%, and white means we have no data, which typically means that we have no tests configured for that particular category. 
These colors and corresponding failure percentage ranges are by default set to these values based on Cisco's extensive knowledge of general wireless networks. However, if you would like to customize the color coding percentage ranges, we can go ahead and click on the blue pin to the right and a menu will open up providing you with full ability to customize it. Let's go ahead and leave this as default. With this understanding, when looking back at this overall summary section, we can immediately see which test categories require attention. It can be seen that we have a moderate amount of failure within my application connectivity category, and an incredibly high failure within my email category. To drill down a step further, let's go ahead and scroll down to the test results section below, which by default shows us the latest view of our sensor test result data with a 30 minute window. For the top portion of this section, it has a purpose to provide us with the ability to find the most problematic location based on a particular test category. And by default, we're looking at sites by all tests, which refer to larger areas such as San Jose or San Francisco and all test categories deployed in all these sites. Right below this, we can see stated in plain text exactly which locations are performing the worst, which locations have the largest health drop and why, as well as which tests fail most often. By clicking on this Show Data for Impacted Top 5 button to the right, we'll even get a further drill down view for each of these sections which immediately provides you with insights in regards to what you as a network administrator must look out for and resolve right now. With that being said, this gives us a high level network view, but if we wanted to narrow down by location, we can click on Sites and it'll allow us to change this filter to a specific building, floor, or even sensor. The same drill down functionality happens when we click on all tests as it allows us to specify a specific test category to look at. Doing so will not only change these insights, but also the heat map below, which brings us to the next topic. We have a sensor test result heat map, which provides us with a per location or per sensor test result view of each test category. As you can see, on the left, we have the locations, which is sorted from top to bottom by highest failure. And on the top, we have our test categories, and just like the overall summary section, each category will be color coded based on the sensor test results failure percentage. If I change my filter to sensors, you'll see that the left side of the heat map has now changed to categorize the top failing sensor from top to bottom. Such a view provides us with granularity to easily pinpoint where my tests are failing. In addition, if I hover my cursor over the failed heat map grids, a tooltip will show up depicting exactly what components of the test has failed. This is an incredibly useful feature because say one of our tests consists of two servers. If one server fails completely while the other is still up and running, the test will still show a failure percentage of 50% with dark red. By being able to hover your cursor over the heat map, you can easily understand such a scenario through the tooltip. Moving on, if our Cisco DNA Center is managing a large network that spans over many sites and buildings, we have the search bar that will filter the heat map based on the location or sensor depending on the category selected. I have a sensor named sensor underscore SF hyphen zero one. So let me search for that. I'm going to type in sensor underscore SF. Observe that with this partially entered string, this search bar is still able to find the device I'm looking for, providing serious convenience when managing large networks. Now, remember I mentioned this section shows a 30 minute view of the sensor test results. If I wanted to get a 24 hour trend view instead, I can go ahead and click on the trend tab at the top left hand corner of the section. As you can see, the labels at the top of the heat map immediately depicts the date rather than the test category to provide you with a higher level per sensor view. So this is the heat map view and the main portion of this test result section. However, there is actually also a card insight view, which can be accessed by clicking the button on the top right hand corner of this test result section. The purpose of this section is again to provide you with the test result data, but in a more direct way. It will only provide you with a per location or per sensor view of the top failing test. Which leads us to our next topic. We've been primarily focusing our discussion regarding how we can easily obtain a high level view of the issues within your network. But say we wanted to get more details regarding why a particular test is failing and all details around it. We can navigate back to the latest tab of the heat map view. And within the heat map, we can actually click on one of these categories to open a drill down view. Let me go ahead and click on the FTP category in global, which is showing up in dark red. Upon clicking on it, a drill down view for the application connectivity category of tests will appear with FTP tests highlighted. And as you can see, we are facing with 100% failure. If we go ahead and click on the bar within the chart, you'll see a detailed error below premised with failure description, which will explain what the error is about. Here, 
It says sensor failed to establish connection with FTP server, which will give you an idea to check the connection to the FTP server or whether or not the FTP server is still up and running. Scrolling down further, you'll notice we have a table view breakdown of exactly what APs and sensors along with what key metrics were involved during this failure. Let's take a look at one more example. Let me go ahead and close this drill down view and click on the POP3 IMAP test under global. Then click on the bar within the chart that depicts the failure cases. Again, premised with the failure description to the bottom left of the chart, we can see the detailed description reading, failed to connect mail server and received no response. Scrolling down to the bottom will again provide us with a table view regarding the sensors and APs involved during this issue. Now as an FYI, observe that above this table we have these top end filters, which in this case depicts the top failure reasons, top APs, top location, and top band. If we wanted to drill down a step even further, we can actually directly click on one of these and it'll filter our table accordingly. Let's go ahead and click on 2.4 GHz under top band to apply a filter and only show 2.4 GHz sensor connections within our table. As you can see, the table has been filtered accordingly. So now, we're able to see exactly what sensors and APs are involved and now understand generally what we need to check to root cause this issue. In this case, we need to check whether my POP3 and IMAP servers are still up and running and whether access to them are still available. But perhaps we're suspecting the issue is not with the POP3 or IMAP server, but with the APs being tested by the sensor. We can actually directly click on one of these sensors within this table and doing so will open up the Sensor360 page for the sensor. Opposed to the wireless sensor dashboard, which shows an aggregated view of all sensor test results, the Sensor360 page provides us with a per sensor dashboard and every sensor managed by Cisco DNA Center will have a Sensor360 page of its own. On an initial glance, this page actually looks very similar to the wireless sensor dashboard. We have the sensor test result timeline at the top and the heat map view below, which is viewed in the same way, only that it's all data specific to this sensor. As an example, instead of being categorized by location, the left side of the heat map is now being categorized by APs, giving the furthest drill down view possible. Scrolling down to the bottom of this page, we'll now notice two additional features that are unique to this page the sensor performance chart, as well as the neighboring AP section. Starting from the top, the sensor performance chart will provide a comparative view for the different tests that are being ran on the sensor. On this chart, this sensor will be shown as the dark blue line. The sensor with the best performance on your Cisco DNA center is depicted in green, and the worst sensor is depicted in orange. The purpose of this chart is to provide you with a baseline with how your sensor should be performing. If there is a large gap between this sensor and the best performing sensor, you would know that there is a need to evaluate the situation to better the performance. Right now, we're looking at the time it took for the sensor to associate to the wireless network. However, if we click on the test type drop-down menu, you can see we can choose from any category. Let's go ahead and take a look at internet NDT downlink throughput results. And as you can see, the y-axis has changed accordingly to now show throughput rather than time. Moving on to the very last feature of the Sensor360 page, we have the neighboring AP section which provides you with a view that allows you to understand exactly what APs are within the same RF proximity as this sensor. On the left, we have our list of neighboring APs along with their signal strength to the sensor. By default, we're looking at the 2.4 GHz view, but by selecting the radio button to the right, we can switch to a 5 GHz view. On the right of the neighboring AP RSSI table, we have a map that's directly imported from the network hierarchy page that we've gone over in episode 2. In addition to the surrounding APs, the map even displays the clients that are currently connected to these APs. As you can see, the wireless sensor dashboard together with the Sensor360 page provides you with an incredibly complete end-to-end -end view of your wireless network and allows you to drill down into every corner of your network to discover and root cause issues the moment they happen. But what happens if our sensors encounter issues of their own? Well, this brings us to our next topic of troubleshooting the Aeronet Active Sensor for any device-side issues on the off chance they do occur. Cisco DNA Assurance has actually made this process incredibly easy with the ability to export a per sensor support bundle. Let's assume that our current sensor is reporting network failures that you believe could be false positives, or another case, perhaps the sensor is having connectivity issues with your Cisco DNA Center. All you need to do is scroll to the top of the Sensor360 page of the sensor in question and click on View Logs. Upon clicking on it, a side menu will open depicting the high-level event logs of what happened. You can then click on Request Support Bundle, which will aggregate all relevant sensor logs into a single tar file, and by clicking on Download Support Bundle, will allow you to download this file. 
Since by owning Cisco DNA Center along with the Aaron Active Sensor, you must be a Cisco customer. You can easily just provide this file to either your tech or sales engineer point of contact, and they would generally be able to root cause the issue through this file alone, making this debug process quick and easy. But let's say we want to quickly look into our sensor and gain some insight. We can do so through our sensor's command line interface, which can be accessed either through console or more commonly through SSH. As mentioned in episode 2, the sensor's SSH is by default disabled after claim and must be manually enabled again. If you require guidance on how to enable SSH on your sensor, please visit episode 2. In my case, I already have SSH enabled for this sensor, so we can go ahead and reference the sensor's IP address at the top, then open a terminal to SSH into it. Now, we've entered the command line interface of the sensor and logged in. The two main sets of commands you will be able to use is premised with either show.11 sensor to view sensor-related outputs, or config, which is used to manually configure settings on the sensor. In order to see a list of commands premised by show.11 sensor or config, enter this part of the command, then enter in a question mark, and it'll output what commands are available, along with their brief description. The first command is show.11 sensor heartbeat status. When this command is ran, it'll provide you with a summary regarding how many heartbeats the sensor has exchanged with Cisco DNA Center. Just as an FYI, a heartbeat is nothing more than a sensor's way of establishing communication with Cisco DNA Center, so ideally, we want to see a success and a positive number in the heartbeat status as well as a recent last success time. If no output is seen when this command is ran, it means the sensor has no communication with Cisco DNA Center, and your next step would be to check if your sensor's network connection is valid. The second command is show.11 sensor test result all, which will provide you with information regarding the details and statistics behind each test ran. The third command is show.11 sensor stats, which will provide you with information regarding the sensor's connectivity with Cisco DNA Assurance. When analyzing the output of this show command, pay close attention to the total test cases run, successful test cases, and failed test cases because these results will provide you with insight regarding how many tests the sensor has performed and the overall status for each of them. The fourth command is show.11 sensor synthetic work list, which will provide you with a detailed table view of the test template that's currently deployed on the sensor, along with information regarding each individual test, such as whether it's passed or failed, the time it's taken, the access point it's testing, and many more. For our fifth command, we have show.11 sensor scan list, which will provide you with a list of APs surrounding the sensor that's broadcasting SSID with an RSSI of negative 75 or higher. And for our sixth and final command, we have show.11 sensor WSA log, which will dump the logs related to the sensor's exchange of information with Cisco DNA Assurance. With that being said, this concludes episode four in the last episode of the sensor series. If you would like to learn more about the Aaron Active Sensor, I've provided a link within the description to the sensor's official deployment guide for your reference. I hope you found learning about Cisco's state-of-the-art Aaron Active Sensor not only to be educational, but also exciting. If you enjoyed this series, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for watching.